Hello, I'm Carl. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I was thinking about looking at if we can make my game render with a single draw call. I used to have this little barely a prototype of a game kind of, but we can walk around and stuff in it. And yesterday I had a stream where I introduced an atlas for all the textures in the game which means that uh, the uh, all the textures in the game now live in a single texture and it doesn't have to sort of change texture when it wants to draw different things which minimizes the number of draw calls which is you know a draw call is the oh, a draw call is whenever the program tells the gpu to hey go do these things go draw these things on the screen so and my my um, atlas currently looks like this we can zoom this one up it's a bit <laughs> it is the atlas here uh, it's a bit smudged because i zoomed it in with the windows photo viewer but you see the tree and the bird and the two frames of this animation here are there plus a little uh, speech bubble you get when you get close to this one. And they all live in the same texture. And there's a nice way to, there's a nice way to visualize uh, how many draw calls you have and what goes into them. And what you do then is you open a program called RenderDoc, which I have here. This is RenderDoc. RenderDoc can take snapshots of your it can take snapshots of your uh, the state of your program like on the GPU and you can inspect like what went into the each into the actual frame. So what you do is you choose your <laughs> this program doesn't have proper DPI scaling. I've upped my DPI scaling a bit today to make whole window but it, it will look a bit weird. But you see here I I have my game uh, selected and I can just launch it. And now it's playing and you sort of see um, you can sort of see how it uh, is uh, it, there's some extra stuff here it's counting the frames but you can while that is running you can go back here and click capture frame immediately right and then you get your frame and you can double click it and then you can go and inspect the frame like what went into the frame and stuff um, like I said, this this uh, program doesn't have it, it doesn't do very good um, uh, GPU scaling. Let's see here, uh, where is the? Um, how do I see the? Oh yeah, so here is here is the the sort of the pass of it drawing everything you see each of these gl draw elements here uh, each of these is one draw call so uh, i think and you can actually even go into the texture viewer and you can see what the state of the back buffer which is the thing it draws to was when that happened so at first it cleared everything green nice then it drew this thing here this is drawn using Raylib's what's it called uh, shapes drawing it draws a red rectangle that's I'm just doing this to make it use the three different sort of ways of rendering and then it uh, draws the text so you see this says GL draw element 6 that's because it's six indices because a uh, rectangle like this has four corners but it's actually two triangles so it's one index one index one index and then it's the other one which is one index one index one index so it's total of six that's why it has draw element six here this one says draw elements 30 and if you hop between these two you see hop between these two you see that it um, says uh, you can sort of see what what what, what changed so in, when you click on this one you see that the text appears so this is the draw call for drawing the text and it says 30 that's because it's 30 indices and that makes sense if you think about it because each letter is a rectangle that's sampling out of a texture so the h yeah the h is 6 so what 6 times 5 30 uh, so that's why it 
it's uh, 30 indices in this one. And then it's the other stuff here. Uh, if you, the final stuff is the text, the, the, the stuff that comes out of my atlas. So I made an atlas thing yesterday that takes, and I, I can quickly show that as well, just to be sort of holistic here in what we're doing. And this one is says 24, and if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times 6 is 24. So it's one square per each of these. So it all makes sense. What we want to do here is to, well, it's more of an ex fun experiment on my side. It would be cool to see if I can, uh, it would, I think I'm, my computer is playing some audio somewhere. It's muted, but I see that it's playing some audio. I will find it soon. Uh, interesting. Something is playing audio. Oh well. Um, is it maybe Spotify? No, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, it's my desktop audio is muted on the stream, anyways. Um, so the reason you might care about this, I mean, for this kind of game, is not so important. But the more draw call, like draw calls are, if you can do more things with one draw call, then you get a lot better performance and usually things are split into separate draw calls for uh, whenever you need to sort of have different sort of settings for what it is supposed to be using when drawing uh, you can uh, you can specify like draw all this geometry on the screen which is sort of you know this these different things but if they all those three different things use different textures then you have to uh, before you draw a say that oh but use this texture instead or use this texture instead so for that reason it gets split into three draw calls here because it's three different textures there's actually a shape drawing texture and then there's a font texture which is generated from a ttf and then there's this one right um and i i am just gonna turn on my mixer and see what program is playing audio on my computer. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just interested. Ah, it's Firefox. So I have a tab somewhere playing audio. But you won't hear it. It just, I just don't like having things on like that. I'm gonna close all these. It's not that one. It's this tab. Where is that even? I have a window I can't even find. No, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's the different. I found it. It was a it was a tab watching this stream. <laughs> Uh, Valfisken Games asks, but Rayleigh has its own texture packer, right? Yeah, well, it doesn't. I, I think Ray sells or has for free or something. Uh, there's some texture packer. There's no built in into Rayleigh, but I. It, the hard part of packing textures is the packing. And for that, you have libraries like STB Rect Pack. So you don't. I mean, the hard part is not. So you can do it yourself also if you want to. Now we show. I, I I did all this. So, like I said, this thing, this thing here, the atlas, um, is a atlas I made. I generated, and I have a file called Ace to Atlas. So yesterday I did a stream where I, I I, I read a sprite files directly instead of going. Instead of loading PNGs from disk, I read a sprite files directly, and then I output their contents into an atlas, and then I also output. Uh, so we have we have both the atlas, right? The atlas. Uh, we have both the, the PNG here uh, that looks like this, but then we also have the atlas.odin, which is also generated by my atlasing 
uh, code. And this one is like, uh, it has a name for each texture or each frame of an animation in this case, because the player walk is two. And then, and then it also has like all the, the data you need, like where in the atlas is the tree? Okay, it's a zero, zero, it's at the position zero, zero, and it's 42 times 42 big. Oh, it's here, okay. Um, so, that way, uh, I since I generate this Odin file, this atlas.odin, I generate this before I compile my main game. That way I can be like, in here, I can be like dot tree. I can say, oh, well, I want to have a tree here, and it, I just use the texture name, and then it later resolves that using using this stuff here, using this uh, array here. It resolves like, okay, uh, I can using the, the the texture name tree, I can fetch the rectangle at where it is, uh, and uh, some also if, if it's an animation, I can store in here how long the frame is and stuff. So the way that works just to just to because if you have everything in separate textures, you might also get one draw call per, like if I have one texture for the tree and one for the player character, then you might get one draw call per one of those as well. So I've already eliminated a lot of draw calls by just combining everything into an atlas, right? And the atlasing stuff, I, I, I did a stream yesterday, but I afterwards I also, uh, I didn't do the packing in that stream. I just did the sort of loading. Most of it was me lo trying to use an A sprite loader. Uh, and so what this essentially does is it it goes through. This is this is not totally feature complete because it it, will, it currently doesn't support having multiple layers per frame uh, but I'll, I can add that la easily later I just haven't done it um, hello T T is asking if I have super stickers is that the is that the uh, subscription sort of stuff I, d I haven't enabled any of that uh, I might look at it one day but thank you uh, I, I, I there's currently no way to support me except just buying my games on Steam or itch uh, yeah Rayleigh Justin Rayleigh has its own batching for drawing textures that's correct it will if if you if you draw like a bunch of things after one another, right? Like you draw, um, I mean, if you draw like, It, it 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 will it will submit everything later so it will be like okay you want to draw uh, this you want to draw the tree here and you want to draw the tree here and you want to draw the cat here and then it will wait until you call end drawing before it does all that and then it will submit it so then it notices that oh all these are actually this tree these two trees and this cat are drawn one after another and they use the same texture so therefore i can just batch them I can take all those, put them into one draw call because it's just some geometry. It's four. It's it's a couple of squares. It's a couple of quads it needs to draw, and then those have, and then it can define sort of the UV for how to pick out. Like it can the rectangle in the atlas it can do, but if those do use separate textures, then they still become separate draw calls because it can't. There's there's no magical batching that sort of. Well, you could have some magical thing. That uh, um, you could have some magical finger force that ma that automatically makes uh, uh, atlases for you, uh, but I don't think really it does that. We 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 could check actually. Uh, we could check. I mean, we can do a simple test.
how do we easily test this? We use we can just load an extra. Let's. Yeah. So so as long as it's just. So as long as it's just a single. Use a single texture. Uh, then you you don't have to do an explicit batching. It will just be like oh you. You use uh, you're using the same texture of these this like draw texture uh, like whenever you run uh, like all these calls of draw texture that come one one after another use the same texture therefore we can just take the, all the geometry we need to draw those and put them together as one draw call and that's why uh, in render doc here we see that it could do that but if I, I, I actually want to do this just to show. I think it's a good. Let's let's take some other. I, I just want to show what happens when we have. Let's take something from cat and onion. Uh, something silly. Uh, Take this batter bowl. That's amazing. Uh, we paste it in here. Good. And then we go to init. No, not in. To init, and we say uh, game memory, and then we can say test texture. Uh, oh, this window is very big. Uh, test texture rl dot texture. So I'm just going to show you what happens if we throw in an extra texture in the mix here because I think that's interesting. Even though we, rl dot, oh, we can just run load the load texture proper haver load texture batter bowl dot png. So Matthew is asking if I can explain what I'm doing. So we, we will get to uh, making sure that everything is in one texture. So that, every, I, so that my f what I want to do is put the font I use into this into the atlas next to all these things, the tree and the things, and then the the texture that's used for drawing shapes. And that way it can draw everything in sort of in one go. Uh, So we load the texture there, and then we go to maybe we can go here. Where do we draw? Where do I draw the? Yeah, here it draws the objects, and then it draws the the NPCs down here. So maybe in between here we can say draw RL dot draw text texture V. And then we say gmn dot test texture, and we draw it at position minus ten, minus ten, and it will have the tint white. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, um, I actually studied a bit of Japanese, so I can almost read your name, but I don't remember. Is it Todo? No, Toshi. No, I know. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's to and then something. But it was so long ago. It was 15 years ago, so I forget everything. Um, right, so we... Yes, Odin has Rayleigh bindings built in. So when you... When you download Odin, what you do is you just write import RL vendor Raylib and then you use Raylib and it will link everything and it will work. Except maybe sometimes on Linux because of reasons. But usually it will work. Um, on Windows and Mac it will just work out of the box. So oh, I'm just trying to move that guy a bit. <coughs> 
So there we see this this one here now. This is not part of the atlas. The atlas is here. The atlas looks like this. This one I copied in and draw. Now let's open render doc. And close this and we will launch the application from within render doc instead. And then we'll capture a frame and we'll look at it. See how it looks. Capture frame immediately. So what you can see now here is we can go to the texture viewer in render doc. Suddenly, suddenly we have four draw calls. Wait, I, I want to make this even more convincing because I'm going to move the draw call of the but yeah, we have four draw calls now, but I want to move this draw call to down to sort of here maybe. Is that should still work? Render doc. I not 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 Reaper, render doc. I accidentally opened my door almost. Um Sri and Paul asks, what do you not like about programming Odin? Good question. I'm quite happy. I don't. I don't. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. So here, this now, 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 this is a good convincing one because now, now we see that it can't do anything automatically. So we have four draw calls now that we have introduced another texture that does not live in the atlas. So first it draws the red rectangle, then it draws the text, then it draws all these guys, and then it draws this one and it can't so there's no sort of automatic batching that can put this one the drawing of this one in the same draw call as this one because they use different textures so Rayleigh has no magic to, to fix this for, of, for us but what I've done here is that I've already combined all my textures in the game so far into one texture so now all my and the batching is you know the batching in Rayleigh is essentially that it can say 24 here instead of having lots of GL draw element 666666 instead of having lots of separate GL draw elements it has one that's that has five four I mean I can't count that's the problem uh, it has four uh, four rectangles that have six indices each so that was just an example Uh, of how, uh, why, like how how Raylib doesn't do anything really about this automatically for you. So then you can make a little atlas, and it's quite cool to have your whole game in one texture. That's essentially what will happen in the end. The whole game will be in one texture. I mean, I, I barely have a game yet. I just started this project, but I'm sort of exploring some technical things. Uh, and uh, I want I, I I used to have background music, but I realized that uh, people can have their own background music on, uh, so then they they can choose themselves. Because if your stream gets long enough, I think it's you you might want to have your own sort of stuff to put on. Um, right. So let and just to the 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 atlas thingy I made, what it does is it goes into the Atlas Maker thingy. What that one does is it goes into this, uh, it looks in this folder here where I have a couple of A sprite files, the, or the, the, the original sort of, the, these can have animations and whatever in them. And it goes in there and it loads the texture data from those. It figures out like what are the pixels, like the actual data. Uh, what is the size of the rect like how big is the texture and all that and then it stores that in a list and then after it's stored it in a list it um, then it goes over all those things it's stored in a list and it puts them into this format that stb rect pack likes stb rect pack is a tiny library that which only purpose is to pack rects efficiently into a, a bigger texture. Uh, so this one can this. The, the, what I do here is I just say like 
is make an array called packrex that has the width and height of each of the separate uh, things I loaded from the ASPRite files. And I also keep the ID in there, which is essentially the index into where are they in the in the list of textures. So this is the list of textures that I create by loading all the ASPRite stuff. And then I go through all those, and then I set, tell packrec to please pack this rects, and it does that. And then I make the atlas. So I then I generate a big blank transparent image uh, that is the same size as I promised. Uh, I promise uh, rec pack up here that I will use a texture that's atlas size by atlas size. That's 1024 10, 10, by 1024, I think. So it goes down here. Here it sort of, you know, generates that, and then it. That here, here it makes the blank image, and then it goes with the, with the, the packed rects. Like the the result of this STB packed rect stuff is that it it will have, it will have given coordinates to all these rects, so that it has sort of packed them in a kind of optimal way. So that's what it does here. It can sort of. Um, uh, this x x and y on each of the pack rects is where it decided that it should go. So then I can just use the Raylib. This, so this is a small program that's not part of my main program. I run it before the game. So I, I in build hot reload here, I, I first compile ace to atlas, right? And then I run the program. And this program will output a PNG plus an Odin file. So the PNG here is uh, this is this is making the PNG the atlas itself, and it's sort of drawing uh, into the atlas at wherever STB pack correct said it should, and it takes the stuff from each thing it loaded from those ASPRITE files, and then it also saves stows away somewhere this atlas rect stuff, which contains the information I need to create the Odin file as the metadata of where to find things in the atlas. Uh, and the Odin file looks like this. You know, it has the name of the texture. This is based on the file name plus this number here if it has several animation frames. And then it says we are in Atlas to find these things. And also an offset uh, because they might have a, they might be packed efficiently so that the uh, the, 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 the Asprite file, um, the Asprite data might not take into account how big the document size in Asprite originally was. And then it has a duration if it's an animation. Well, it always has a duration, but it's only used for animations. Um, and this is the stuff done. I mean, I, I, I realized someone wrote to me on Twitter that maybe I could use the Odin exporter code. It's sort of a, there is a thing in Odin that can write Odin code based on, uh, like you can, you can parse and then write. You can parse Odin code and write Odin code, but I've never used that. I guess I could manually create the the, the structure uh, in the data structure stairs of that. So there's in the in the core library of Odin, there is a library that can write Odin code for you. But I write it manually. I like okay, uh, this is you see up here package game atlas texture texture name. It's these things package game atlas texture texture name. Blah blah blah. All this stuff. So this generates the Odin file, and this stuff up here generates the Atlas. So then you have, you have everything. You have your, so that, and then I can in my game I just I stop have like then I can use these texture names as sort of handles to textures. I don't need to. I just load the Atlas in my game. Here, here I load my Atlas load texture uh, texture Atlas file name, uh, which is uh, this one. And then after that, I can sort of like, okay, the trees use the texture. This is just an enum. Static object has an enum texture, a texture name. And uh, then later when it wants to draw it, it just in draw, it goes over all the, it goes over all the objects here. And it just says draw texture. These are two here because I haven't removed the old texture drawing proc yet. But this, this is the one that uses a texture name. And then later, when it actually wants to do the actual drawing, then it will, then it will do this stuff. It's just like, okay, uh, this is the enum of the texture. Grab it from the Atlas texture list, which is this big thing here. Do that, 
uh, that will get that will give you the rect and the offset and the document size and the duration duration not used here that's used in animation code and then you can just do use that to you see here it uses the offset and the rect the size of the rect and the position comes from whatever the code said where it wanted to draw the texture and some stuff like that and then when it actually draws it it just says draw with the atlas from the rectangle uh, that the is specified in atlas textures and draw it into this destination one and this one i calculate you know based on the size plus some origin stuff and some position stuff and then there's nothing else to it and and then for all the ones for all the calls to this tec draw texture pro that happen in succession um, for all those it will um, uh, but really will automatically batch it since it can batch it because it uses the same texture so it can use the same uh, it can do it one draw call because you just need to say this there's a rectangle here rectangle here rectangle here and all these use look into different rectangles of the texture one interesting thing is that I have a debug mode if I press F2 it shows these rectangles I think this might be interesting because is it still running? Can I? I want to check something. Oops, I closed render doc. Uh, Matthew is asking, you're doing like sprite tile sheets. It's it's not really sprite tile sheets. It's more like a optimized texture for just quickly. Uh, more very quickly drawing stuff like it's it, it, so it, everything uses the same texture and when everything uses the same texture then uh, why didn't this work hmm. if everything uses the same texture then you can just um, then it doesn't have to split things up the job it says the jobs it sort of like the work it says sends to the graph to the gpu it doesn't have to split it up as much <laughs> render just gave up there for a while i wanted to see something if i enable the the render the debug mode because before this we had four draw calls no we had three draw calls if we remove this uh, silly thing i had up here so it would be one for the cube one for the text and then one for the all the textures but if I have the debug rendering on, then it might have to split them up into more draw calls. Is that see if that's the case? Yep. And this also makes sense. You see, now there are lots of draw calls. Because it can only batch if 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 it wants to draw a tree and then another thing, like it wants to draw one thing from the atlas and then another thing from the atlas, and they, those two lines happen like you know. Uh, those are drawn one after another, but here I enabled my debug draw, which in it, which draws a little yellow circle just after the texture. So it, then it would be like, okay, draw from the atlas, and then it draws with the circle, then it draws this circle here, and then uh, when it does that, it uh, this doesn't use the atlas, but they still must happen in the same order because otherwise your sort of you know the ordering on the screen will be messed up because it's dependent on which order you call these. So that's you know also an interesting thing to note that the debug rendering here uh, injects all these extra things here. One draw call just means that I will have only one of these. So that's, what, but I'm gonna start on this now. I just ended up talking a lot here about what can happen and what how you can see what, so, Essentially, this is one draw call. This is another draw call for drawing all the text. This is another draw call for drawing that one. This is another draw call for drawing these two. This is another draw call for drawing that. Now, you didn't cause a tangent. It's it's very good. I think this is what people find interesting anyways. Uh, okay. But that's just interesting. And hopefully, I don't know. I know we can make. I know we can make uh, Raylib use 
a separate shape drawing texture. I don't know if that one is only for rectangles or if we can use it for these little circles as well. I used this, this little, I used this little circle here to. Uh, I used this little circle here to uh, show where objects are. Carlo asks, are you going to do painter's algorithm? It's already sort of doing painter's algorithm. That's, well, I, I have a, I have a, I, it, well, it doesn't really do that because I have, I sort my drawables on the position on the screen. So I add everything to a list and I sort that list based on the Y position on the screen. And then I, that's so you can go behind trees and stuff, you know. Like you can go behind here, but you can go in front of it also. Right. So there's a, there's a separate sort. Okay, let's get, let's get started with this actually now. So we uh, can do launch application. We can relaunch this one. Just so we have this, the original data, what we're looking for. Currently we have three draw calls, the square, the text, and then the, and then everything from the Atlas. Uh, let's start with maybe trying to get the font into the Atlas. Maybe the square would be easier, but uh, I have, a, I don't know. So what we do then, is that we go to, um, I already, I already have a procedure here that sort of loads stuff from, uh, it already loads a TTF manually because I wanted to pre-multiply the alpha on it. So we can probably take this and it's quite easy. This might be quite easy because what this thing does is that it, it, it loads a font, and then I think all the different letters have small images, and then it makes an atlas from that, and then it. Uh, this is my pre-multiplication of the alpha. And then it also goes into each glyph and sets the, the, the image like this for the glyph. And what more? But essentially, essentially what we need to do here is make sure that the f we make our own font where we supply this rectangles thingy ourselves. And we supply the texture. The texture will be our atlas, and we will make the rectangles ourselves. So we will maybe maybe we can copy this. This will be fun. We copy it into the. So, like I said, I, I have my game code, but I also have the Ace to Atlas code. And Ace to Atlas is a separate program that runs before the game. So in here we can do anything really, whatever we want. So let's just copy this one in here and modify it until it does what we want. So what we want to do here is um, we want to load a font, a TTF from disk. And I have this TT, like I can also, what you can also look at here is you can see here is this font that Rayleigh has generated, it's here. Uh, this one. So we sort of want to incorporate this stuff into my atlas, which is this one. So what we can do is we can load, we can load the font data, right? But we're not gonna generate a font atlas. This is funny. This gen image font atlas in Raylib actually uses SDB rect pack as well. So, but I use it manually. So 
So what does our our other code here, what does that do really? This is the stuff that loads a texture from an A sprite file and puts it into this texture data array. Texture data array has all this stuff. Right. I think I can do a separate array of sort of font glyphs with all the stuff I need. Maybe I can even, let's look at this stuff here. What does, uh, if we open Raylib, font. So a font in Raylib has a size and how many glyphs and the padding around the charts, I think that's maybe a, uh, in all directions, how much padding. Then the texture is the atlas for the font, it's one texture. And then for each letter it has a rectangle it needs to grab stuff from. And then it also knows which glyphs are in the font. And what does glyph info actually? Yeah, so this one has a UTF-8 value and some stuff. Character offset when drawing, character offset when drawing, character advanced position X. Okay. We're not gonna make the font here. We're gonna make the font inside. Let's see here. We're gonna make the font We're gonna make the fonts in the game. So what we need here is just a rectangles and some stuff. How does Raylib do this? Is the question. Because here it just loads the glyphs, right? Let's look at what this one does. I have gen image font atlas. I can look in the C code of this is the C code of Raylib. What does it do? We want to do something similar, but not really the same. Um, okay, it makes a list of rectangles. And how does it figure out the size of each rectangle? Okay, it uses the width and height of the image. So the glyphs all, right, we can so we can use that. So what we can do in our case is load load ttf font uh, textures whatever something like that and what we will turn here is a struct of texture data so when we when we load a sprite files we return this kind of thing uh, I copy this from the a sprite version but we just want we don't need a duration we just need a rune no, okay what do we need here Let me think. Can I just use the glyphs maybe straight up? Can I just return that perhaps? Is that all I need? Because the, maybe that's all I need actually. So maybe I can just actually, maybe I don't even need this proc here. Let's just comment that out. Maybe we don't even need this. Just figuring some stuff out here. So 
So here we make a list of textures and here down here we tell SDB pack directs how to pack those rects. So what we need to do is before we need to include in here our fonts or something. You know. So Let's just tell this one. Please make 95 glyphs. And then base size is, that depends on, so a bit of a problem here is of course that we will need to in the Atlas define how big text we want in the game. That might, that might be a problem. Uh, we'll see. This is, we'll, we're doing this because it's sort of interesting. Uh, Okay, I'm using font size 32 apparently. So we can just do font glyphs equals load font data. We don't need this thing. File data. Okay, we need to load the actual font. Let's go back here and this is, this is how you do that. So we load the font here. That's my font that I've used. I don't need to care about the allocator here. <coughs> and then we say, these are the glyphs. Right. Okay, that's good. Then we have all the sort of letters. What we need to do then is, I can move this code to down here maybe. Then we need to loop over all the glyphs, glyphs for G in glyphs. G dot, what is it? Is this Raylib glyph? Oh yeah, so the each load font data returns a list of glyph info uh, how do i know how many it actually generated code points font size Cold point. I guess it ge always generates 32 or something. Because that's what I tell it to do. Um, because this was a multi pointer, so I needed some way to know how big it was. It wasn't a normal Odin slice or anything because it comes from C. So then the image is, what we need to do is we need to, this pack rect needs to be, what the, let's make this one dynamic instead. I, uh, this one I made exactly the size of the number of texture that came out of the ace price stuff, but it's a bit more complicated now. Dynamic, uh, what was the name of it even? A type, rectpack.rect, .rect. like that. And then we can just append to pack rects. And we will append a rect pack dot rect and this one needs sort of these three things here. You might notice on this one I've added plus one on each line here. This is sort of the size each texture should have inside the uh, the, the the size of each texture. It, it one, it's one I'm going to try to pack into the atlas is this one. Uh, 
uh, and the plus one is just so I get one pixel padding between each because since I use a sort of a pixel art filter and in some other cases you can get bleeding between things when they are just up against each other. So we put plus one and that's a good way because then it will still, when you write in the texture later, it will write it at the top corner and then there will be one pixel padding at the right and the bottom sort of to be fit in there nicely. Creativity is asking, are you sure that append will work without make on rect packs variable? Yes, it works. So what happens is when you just write like this, then it makes a dynamic uh, list that's all zeros. I think you can dynamic uh, the dynamic array internally, I think looks like this. A dynamic array has a pointer to the data, which is essentially like the data of the array. <laughs> and then it knows how, <clears throat> how much capacity it has and what length it has, and then it has an allocator. When you just write, this is what it does internally because dynamic arrays are a bit magical. When you just write like this, then it just, all these, field, all these fields inside it are zeroed out, right? So the first time it calls append on one, it will be like, oh, data is, data is nil, there's nothing there. So then it will be like, be like okay, uh, let's take the allocator, the, like this allocator in here is also zero, but it, it takes the allocator, the context.allocator, it takes that one and it uh, makes a new data thing here. That's why there's an ampersand here because it takes the pointer to this thing so it can change it, so it can Allo like it can modify the data block and the capacity and the length and everything and the allocator. You can do that <coughs> on almost anything in Odin where you want to, uh, well, on the dynamic arrays you can do that because it it will just make it. So you just, you just need to, if you do this and then later you call append, you just need to make sure like, okay, what allocator is actually used right now? So in case like, yeah, you know, you just need to be sure of what you're doing, but. So what we can do here is g.image make, I only use on a dynamic array if I want to pre-initialize it to a specific length so I can index into it and add things. Like if I know that it will be at least this and that big, which I actually, I realize now that I write 32 here, let's do this. Uh, font uh, num chars 32, put that there, put that there. Now we don't need to do this anymore. So we can actually make it, uh, but we will just do make, I mean, we want to use a dynamic array like that. No, length of textures plus because now we can fit all, where are they? These guys plus the font. Uh, so then we can do something similar to this. I mean, it's nice to avoid, I mean, this program, I don't really care about, this is not part of my main game. This is a separate small program, but you know, you can do that. Uh, so here we will write the index like this. And down here we must write font num chars plus index because the first font num chars will be these and then your indices for your textures will go up here. Uh, then there's of course a problem here because we're currently mixing two different lists in here. But maybe, maybe we can just do this. Maybe that will work. I'll do some tricks here. Uh, so let's go into here and we say g.image.width, g.image.height. So that's the image of the little uh, that's the image uh, of each letter. Like that. Yep. That's fine. Um, so 
Now it did all that, but it couldn't pack the rex because my index down here is invalid. But that's quite easy to fix. We <coughs> we just need to uh, do like this. If rp.id is less than max now, whoa. I just open a new file. Num font num chars. Is that it? So the I think if I want off by one error here or not. Maybe not. So in this case it's uh, rp.id minus font num chars. This is in the case we are in the textures. <laughs> I'm just doing this because in stb rect pack you only have a single ID field <coughs> like this. I mean, I could you can do this in a couple of different ways. You could use the highest bit and sort of put the number there to be like, what's the ID of the? Is this did this one did this rect come from the textures list or from the font list? Because the data is slightly different. I could maybe combine them into one, but this is how I done now. So then I just subtract this like that. Um. This one is still a bit sad. Index 32 is out of range 0 to 5. Oh yeah, because I don't use the index. This might work now. Well, okay, let's turn off the game because it was hogged by. Um, let's see, this might look quite funny because now if we, let's open a sprite to look at, uh, that's the only good way to look at uh, the atlas, I think. Yeah, you see, the funny thing that has happened here now is that rect, the rect packer has actually gone in and packed in the font. I haven't written the font yet, but you can see that everything has moved around because I haven't written in the textures yet. So let's try to do that. And Hopefully I can draw these in a nice way. The, the problem is that the texture comes in as, I think it comes as grayscale with alpha. And what I want is in the texture I want R, R8, G8, B8, A8 stuff. So we'll see. Uh, and in this case, the index is just, so this is for the fonts. Uh, so then we just do what? What are they called? Font the uh, glyphs. G equals glyphs. IDX like that. Oh wait, I don't. that maybe and if it doesn't succeed we'll just fail loading font <coughs> oh glyphs okay good this is getting exciting now so now we need to now we need to both draw into the atlas and also generate. Well, we can draw into the atlas first. Then we can later generate the stuff for. We also need to generate some metadata inside atlas.odin that's maybe separate from this stuff about which character in the font has which rect, and then I can from that build the actual font that I use in the game. Because then I can manually just piece together the Raylib font when I start the game. Because, like I said, this program generates Odin code that's then later compiled in as part of the actual game. So it's like a pre, like a code generator thingy. Okay, so we have the glyph image. Why do I bother? Uh, is. Wait, do I even need an image here? Because the glyph has an image, so I don't need this at all. The image is just... What? The image is just g.image. 
that's a really big image, I think. Glyph info. Yeah, look. No problem. Not sure what about all these guys. Uh, and this, this is the rune character offset x when drawing. Yeah, we might need to output this data to make it look correct. We'll see. And the source rect is the source rect is then of course image dot width image dot height that we take the whole image of the letter and we put it at rp dot a. this is the same as down here we, this is what rect pack rect pack wants it to be there and then it's the same size and then we just draw into the atlas the image let's see if that worked this might look wrong i must reopen it in raylib in look at that it's messed up but it's something <laughs> what happened? Interesting. Okay. What went wrong is the question. Wait. Ah, I'm I'm stupid. <laughs> Funny that no one no one saw this. This is the size of the font. Font size. This is the font num chart. It's supposed to be 95, and that's supposed to go in here, and the font size is supposed to go in there. Here you go. Look at that. It all looks messed up because uh, it drew. I, I need to probably. It's drawing the wrong type of image, I think, into. I thought it would work, that Rayleigh would sort of fix that. But it's a grayscale plus alpha. And it seems to have just, and of course, all these I can also skip, but I can probably figure that out, the broken ones. It's because my font doesn't have some letters. Actually, this font is a bit crap. I might replace it, but hey, I can just generate a new atlas then. And this atlas here is 512 by 512. I said 1024 by before, but all modern graphics cards, I, as far as I know, support up to like 4096 texture size so if you have a small text pixel art game you could even have you could have probably your whole game plus maybe a font in two different sizes inside your atlas and i think it will be fine because this is this can be i mean let's see how big it how big can we go i think this atlas size works on all all gpus the past many years I think it works on my mom's 10 year old like silly computer that she has so you see in this case it it all this font is just this tiny piece up here and you have all this to use so you can you can make a pretty pretty graphically uh, a game with pretty like uh, Yeah, Thunder says 1K should be safe, but yeah, but I, I think I looked at the old, like, yeah, I don't know. I think for, if you can you do for, 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 yeah, so that's the thing. What do you think about making games that work and even work on 20 year old computers? Uh, 
I think it's nice if they, maybe if 10 year old, like, yeah, uh, Rayleigh abuses by default OpenGL 3.3, so I think that should be fine with 4K, but yeah, no matter how, I've, I might I might be fine with a 2K or a 1K texture. But the question about making games that work even on 20 year old computers, um, it's not it's not super interesting it 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 it's not uh, i don't think it's 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 much more important to make a game that will work in com on computers in 10 years uh, than computers i mean in 5 in 5 years if you make a game that works on 10 year old computers then in 5 years it would work on 15 year old computers uh, but uh, yeah, I haven't yet tried what the like what the oldest machine that can run Cat and Onion is. I don't know. My, my mom's computer is like twelve years old, I think, and I ran it on a twelve year old MacBook, and it ran in 60, 60 FPS. And I think that game has some big textures because I programmed it like a silly nilly. Anyways. Let's move this to, let's just use 512 because I like how it, I like how it uh, is easy to look at like this. Okay, let's try to figure out the alpha stuff here on this one. And that's, we might have to manually convert the image of each glyph. Image draw because what does this one do? Image alpha. I, I want to do that anyway. It's pre multiplied alpha because I must do that because of my. I, I've been down here in a previous stream so. But this one seems to assume the image has load image colors. What does this do? Okay. I think what I want to do is splat out all the colors get it that's what this one does or maybe I could just do it actually we might be fine by just doing this as a quick fix uh, I'll, I'll explain why explain why Uh, just do that, see what happens. Run it again, close this one, reopen it. Did not help. I thought this might help because of how it's implemented. Because this one... We load all the colors. And it will splat out the... It will splat out things. Sorry, I was just saying something. So let's, uh, because I think it's uncompressed grayscale, the picture format. Let's, okay. Let's stop guessing and start.
let's check the pixel format of each font image. So we can, yeah, uncompressed grayscale, all of them. Okay. In that case, Maybe that's how it's supposed to look. Maybe it's supposed to look like this. Maybe it does the shader does something where it just uses the black and the white and doesn't care about alpha. I'm not sure. Anyways. I need it. we can Let's worry about this later. Let's look at, let's have it like this for now. So let's generate the metadata we need to reconstruct the font inside the game now. Uh, how do we do that? Let's just look at atlas.odin. And then we can say font font rects maybe. And how do we Let's look at uh, TTF from memory. So this is sort of what we will need to do. We will need to we will need to make a font that has a list of glyphs where each glyph What is a what is a font? No. Oh. It needs a list of glyphs. It needs all these things, right? So I can I can know this and I can know this and I can know this. That's the atlas here, are the rectangles that came out of the rect packing. And then I just need this stuff here, which is the value. And then it wants an image per. It wants an image per. I don't know if it actually needs that image per um, glyph really for for drawing purposes. Like this one here. Okay, so these are used for image draw text. But if I don't think if you only do GPU drawing, I don't think this even needs to be set. So that's interesting. Let's go to atlas.odin. I'm just I mean I know this is generated this file. I'm just typing some stuff here to sort of sort my a design for myself what to generate in this file. I think I can do something like this actually. So a glyph. Uh, a glyph is the value. Let's just take all these things and throw them in here. And then it's an offset x. And then it's a offset y. I don't know. I don't really know what these things are, but I think they're needed. Let's just skip them for now. 
I know it need, I will need the value of the rune. We'll see if we can just zero all these or if we need them later. And then we need the rectangle, which I have there. And the value and the rectangle. I think that's it. Maybe I need to add in the other things later. And then we just have a list of these of where to find each rune in the atlas. And then I construct a font in the game from that using the atlas. Maybe it will work. So let's take this. Let's take my little design and go here. And I will just put it in a comment here. Yeah, I should probably have some better way to generate code. This is how I currently do it. It's very brute force. So I need an atlas glyph. Let's extract. It's a rect, and then it doesn't need these two things. So then I have I will print out the definition of my struct into the file, and then. And then I also need a separate list of. So down here we put things into a list for making the metadata down here. Which is all good. But maybe. Maybe, maybe I can. So this one. I need to have both the rune. And the rect, the rect I get from rect pack, and that's the the destination rect into the atlas. This one. So let's uh, what's this called? Atlas rect. Mm. The naming here has gone a bit funny, but uh, whatever. Where is atlas rect? This one. Let's just do Atlas from Atlas Glyph. Wait. Yeah, that's fine. And we say rect rl dot rectangle, and then we say rune oh, value rune. Perhaps there is a better way to do it. Atlas Glyph is an Atlas Glyph that has a rect, which is the dest into the Atlas, and then it has a value, which is G dot value, and then we can say, why is yeah this is my this is some old stuff that there's no reason for the atlas to have a list of rects like this. I'll fix that later. The atlas just needs to be an image these days. Uh, Let's do like this, and then we say Atlas Glyph, and then we say Atlas Glyphs. Is this? So we add that in there. We go to the bottom here, and we just do something like this. Atlas glyphs is a uh, is just an, ar an array of just put a question mark there I think to make it as long as the number of elements in the initializer list I think Atlas glyph. And then we just need to initialize all these, and they will have just a rect and a value. So the rect is this, and the value is this. I hope this works. Ugh. Remove that stuff. The name, no need. Rect with height, blah blah blah, offset. This is stuff I copied from the other one. Uh, ag dot rect dot y, blah 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 blah. And I 
think we can remove this stuff. Maybe this will work. Okay, maybe this will work. Wait, yeah, this is how my... So now we see that it generated a new file with this stuff. I done some mistakes here, apparently. Oh, because offset is still in. No, that's the wrong one. This one. Oh, well, there's only one value. Uh, I don't know how uh, how do you even write a how do you even write a rune into a file like that like the value of a rune <laughs> this is, oh no it's gonna need like escaping and stuff because it wrote a quotation mark I think. Yeah, here, he wrote a quotation mark and then it broke itself. Uh, is there some way to escape? Uh, file path escape. Or is there a better way to do this? Or should I just print one rune to string? Maybe this is the best way. Mm hmm. I can use Q latencies. Okay. Let's have a look. See. But I'm not sure even how what's the best way is to print out a <laughs> Okay, yeah, these got uh... Okay, that's actually correct now Nice, it's quoted and it, uh, it did all the things super cool is there a I don't know if this is the correct way to store a rune like this, but maybe it is. I'm happy about something, but we'll see. Index is out of bound. Aha, wait. Do I just do this? Oh, value is unknown. Oh, because it's the wrong type. Many things wrong there. There you go. Now it's correct. Now it's compiled and everything. So you have a list of Atlas glyphs and you have, where are they in the Atlas? And what's the rune? Let's see how that goes. When we go back to game and let's have, just have a quick look in the, in the Atlas. It looks like this. Sure. Let's try that. So currently, this is where it loads the font. If we just replace this stuff here with our own stuff, then we should be fine. So we need to generate a font somehow. Let's see in Rayleigh what it gives us if it... Load font. I mean, I think I have to... I think I have to... Uh, just manually key all this in. I can also use this one when I generate the Atlas, so I only get the code points I want. Yeah, I think I just have to manually make it, but that's fine. Let's just make it. Let's do it like this. 
gmem.font equals okay base size 32 I will put in uh, defines for this later in the code but I think the padding is zero to the glyphs the texture is gmem dot atlas so this text test texture we can just remove that that was my uh, gmem dot atlas and then we need a big list of rectangles and a list of glyphs to go in there and these we need to sort of you know allocate and stuff good I mean now that currently the game crashes because uh, it will try to index these out of bounds probably because I just set the font to be this stuff without supplying the rectangles um, font rectangles is let's go into the atlas.odin here and have a look so it needs to be like this I'm just going to do a sanity checker is this 95 long yes okay so then we can just here instead write len of atlas glyph no len, len of atlas glyphs and this one let's put this in a little stow the things away here in an anonymous anon 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 scope <laughs> anon 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 anon. len atlas glyphs Hello, this is Odin programming language. I mean, that sounds like that's the, my name, but there was a question in the chat. What, lang what is this language? It's Odin programming language. Um, num, num glyphs is this. We put that in here. Good. Then we make. A, uh, let's do make rl dot. What is it want? Rectangle. I can just write rect. That's a define I have for that. Num glyphs. And then we do for ag in atlas glyphs. So this atlas.odin is put as part of my game. Like it sits next to game.odin here. So I can just, whatever is in here, I can just use, you know, directly. So that is the ace to atlas program makes the atlas and then makes this file and then it compiles my game so i can use this stuff it's very handy for having like it's super nice to have compile time constants for all your textures and stuff in the game like for your game i i, I kind of had this in cat and onion but i didn't have the atlas part i just had the way to talk about the resources like that um so then we will do like this, we will just say font rect idx is ag.rect. We transfer it over this one. So now we should be able to go back here and look. Rex, I don't know, should be rects. This is like rex. And this one needs to be a multi pointer. Multi pointer is just in. Odin, it's it behaves. It's for interfacing with C. It behaves like you know, you know, in C you can have a pointer that act either points to a single thing, but a pointer can act also be used as a list. In Odin, it just the normal pointer is not indexable, like the standard pointer that you draw right like this is not indexable. A list is indexable, but it has metadata about how long it is. So if you want an indexable pointer uh, that behaves like in C without the bounce checking and all that, because you need to feed it into C, then you use this thing. Raw data font, and 
you get this will get uh, raw pointer to to the data inside this list here of rectangles and that's implicitly castable to a multi pointer so now we just need a glyph info same thing here glyph info equals make rl.glyph.info numglyphs we can even do one pass over this loop and just distribute it in two different lists like that we just take the value of the rune uh, maybe that's all we need I don't know and then we take the glyphs and we say glyphs okay we can just do this Yeah, this is just a type thing boots up this is very close to working already there is I need I need uh, I need offsets I, I knew that the, I was gonna guess that offsets was how much extra does it need to add to add each letter because the letter doesn't fill the whole rectangle that's the same as I have I have that in my stuff as well that I can easily transfer over. I'll just put in the advance x also since that seems to be needed. After that, it's just the uh, after that, it's just something about this that is black background that's wrong. But I will figure that out. I think. Bobitronics asks, is this monofont or variable width font? Well. This letter is less wide than this letter. Well, okay, yeah, many, many monospace fonts used to have spacing around, but as you can see, this is, does not do monospacing. I kind of like pixely fonts that are variable width because variable width is easier to read, but it's still nice to have that retro feel, sort of. But yeah, now this one comes out of the atlas. So let's open render doc. That's the most. That's the, we we can we can fix the technical issues later. It's more it's more fun to see if what the hell where is? I'm gonna close all these guys. No. No. Let's launch the game. No. Okay, there's my upside down text. Well, not my upside down text, but my. We have just two render calls now. Amazing. Two draw calls, I mean. We have one draw call for the square and one draw call for everything else, including the text, because it all comes from one atlas now, like this. Now let's fix the rendering issues here. Let's begin with the positioning. Uh, that's, that's, that's a fun result, anyways, that it. This is fun when you open up render doc and you just see that. Oh yeah, it has collapsed to down to really has been able to batch it up to a single uh, textures and the form the textures and the text. Yeah, I, I should look into so Odin comes with a thing to export code based on uh, you can define sort of uh, some kind of data for your code, like what, what, what it is, what code you, what is it called? The AST or something. You can you can define how the some code, and then you can export it, and you can also import a code file while running an Odin program and export it again, and make changes to it and stuff, and then inspect the code logically within your code, so it sort of parses it and everything. So I should maybe someday look into that. But this is Odin is so simple that you can just generate code by just printing like this because it, it, it's just you know I'm not even printing any procedures at this point this is just structs plus arrays of those structs and some enums right uh, what happens if I pre multiply the alpha here that's my first question mm. 
Okay, whatever. Uh, let's ignore that for now. Let's remove this one. Let's get the offset and the advance x over. We will just do that like this. Offset x int. Well, okay, let's just copy these guys. We can use a c int so we get less casting. But since it's within my own code, I will just change the. Change this stuff. Right. So we have the Atlas glyph there, that's good. Then we can go here and be like offset x equals g dot offset x. One can one can wonder why don't I just do this? Atlas, no. Griff. Why don't I just take all this crap plus the rectangle? So I don't need to do anything of this. Yeah, because this is just in bit this is just temporary storage. Because I need to first loop over everything and later print it so I can do it at the correct place in the code. So let's just do this. Glyph is an rl.glyph. Glyph info. That's a bit simpler. Yeah. So we do that. Now we go down here and fix the zompilation errors. But we still need to put it separately because I don't want to have in my generated code that has no dependencies on anything. I don't want to have the Raylib stuff in there. So I would write just like this. A few lines. Off, offset x is a. Uh, I will. I will write this an int. I don't want. I don't want to involve the C stuff here. And then advance x is an int la 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 and then we will write offset x equals a value offset y equals a value advance x equals a value and then we write ag dot ag dot glyph I have a long line here I know it's it's a bit silly. I could actually split it on here. I because I kind of want it to be a one line in the file per because there's so many of them. So it's impossible to read if they end up on as a multiple lines per glyph. Rect y with height glyph dot value. And then we have this one ag dot glyph dot offset x ag dot glyph dot offset y ag dot glyph dot advance x of course these are wrong because they come from really maybe this will compile it compiled uh, this texture pack we'll see how the performance of it is if I can actually run it every time I want to do stuff. Maybe it's too slow. Who knows? I, I can time that later. I can just manually run it every now and then instead if it's too slow. Right now it runs every time I compile my game. It first compiles the, like I said, I showed this before, but if anyone has. First I compile the program that can take a sprite files to an atlas and also now does the font packing. So this one is my just atlas magic program. This one looks through a folder of all my sprite files, gets all out the data, puts them into an atlas. It also opens a font, takes out all the letters, puts them into the atlas, and then makes an Odin file. Like when it's run, it makes an, also an Odin file with the metadata of where is everything. And then the game, when it builds the game DL, that metadata is compiled as part into it, which is the atlas.odin. So then it can just like use the Atlas plus all this metadata to figure out where are things inside the thing, inside the atlas. And then I 
recreate my font and stuff now. Okay, so we managed to, let's go back to the Atlas. We managed to get all the, these things. Good, good, good. Then we can very simply in game here, here we can just now say offset x equals ag dot offset x like this y equals y and then there's something called advance x which I barely know what it does maybe it is some kerning thing who knows okay need some casting I'm, I'm pretty sure this will everything will end up at the right place now now is yes hello now it, the text is correct now it's just this why is the background black and that I'm pretty sure is something related to that the texture used to be grayscale but now it's not so we have to look at that as well but that's a great um, this is a great uh, I should actually I should do that I was inspired by my I should make the window bigger by default it's good for streaming like this smack oh that was a very tall window let's do eight some random resolution here like that it's easier to So it's easier for me to show things in the game because it just scales up everything anyways. So why is it black? If we look in ray in not in really, but if we look in the atlas, yes, sure, there are many black ones and but why do they end up like that when they're rendered into the atlas let's go and have a look so here is my code that draws each glyph into the atlas if we pre the reason I wanted to pre-multiply the alpha was that that one seemed to also change the format of the thing no it's still there okay well that explains it then image alpha pre-multiply checking really what this does aha okay <laughs> it I think it then this is a bit this code is not very uh, efficient it then brings it back into grayscale again so I can't use any of this really, but it, it, it's actually quite uh, simple to do myself, I think. Alpha pre -multiple. let's just load image colors. Is this one available in Raylib? Image colors, yes. So this one, Let me just do this. RL.load image colors. Then I load all the colors. Then I get uh, uh, these. That what this procedure will do because I looked into it. It will uh, for the grayscale. It will expand it so it becomes RGBA, 
which is what I want. So that I'm just abusing that. Uh, image. So then we just need to feed back those colors into the image again and change the pixel format. We can even make a new image. Image grayscale. And then we say image is like this. And we say data equals raw pointer to this stuff here. I know this problem leaks memory like hell right now, but it's a generator and it will, you know, it will. Uh, When it shut down, it just frees all the memory, so it's probably fine. With fight meet maps format, with equals. Okay, this is wrong. This should be image grayscale here, of course. Grayscale dot width. Actually, we can just do like this maybe, and then image dot data equals this one and image dot format equals or 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 a that this one and then we don't need that maybe that will work just need a comma there let's go back to a sprite close it open it still wrong Hey, the neighbor's cat is meowing, meow, meow. And this is still wrong. Why is it? Still wrong. Because the, the drawing of the text should support using any old texture. I think you draw from the atlas into the atlas from the image source white this thing load image colors load image colors this thing will make all the colors and then it will Take each pixel and expand it. Go to the bottom and then it returns the pixels. Should work if you ask me. Should work if you ask me. Look at load font data, what it does. Uncompressed grayscale. Or actually, let's look at load font or uh, gen image font atlas because this is the one the Rayleigh really usually does. So, what does this thing do? Maybe it does something with. The, the colors that's supposed to happen that I don't do. Mip maps is one. X Y blah blah blah. Okay, that just packs it all. Right, here is the stuff that I don't do. This thing sets each pixel to two five five and then set and then takes the value of the pixel. And sets that as alpha. 
that's what we need to do. I, I've been here before, that's why I could recognize it so quickly. Uh, uh, la 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 la. So we unfortunately need to do that manually, but that's not so bad. Where the hell is it? There it is. Um, so let's just do something like this. We go Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I was a bit silly here because I I looked there's two there's two different pixel formats. There is grayscale and there's grayscale alpha. I remember it being grayscale alpha after a font in Rayleigh being grayscale alpha, but this one before it has gone through the Atlas packing that Rayleigh does, it's actually grayscale. So I had a I thought I was in this mode, but I was actually in this mode. So that's why things didn't work. So we just need to go from this to this. No, actually, we go from this directly to this one, and maybe also pre-multiply in the alpha because uh, I want my whole atlas to be pre-multiplied alpha because that gives better rendering. It works better with pixel art filters because I, w I want everything in the game to use pre-multiplied alpha. Um, so we use loop over this thing. And then we this is eight bits per pixel no alpha. So we can just do grayscale is we just transmute maybe uh, what's How do I do this? Grayscale is uh, my brain fried. Each glyph has an image, the image has a raw pointer. Right. I want that raw pointer to be something indexable, so I transmute it to a U8. Uh, of image.data. Right. Because I know that it's in, I know it's 8 bits per pixel, one channel, so I can do that. And then what we're gonna do here is to simply write this. The alpha of each one is um, grayscale i. That's the alpha. And then the color value of each needs to be 255 divided by because I want to pre multiply in the alpha as well. So, what the Rayleigh does are usually is that it says just it's full white plus an alpha uh, and then it colors the text afterwards but by multiplying a text color with it. Um, So I want to do load TT. I've done it here, this stuff. I want to do this, I think. So the color then is a U8 and I take the, I just take two, Okay, this essentially becomes T 
255 times some value. I think this is correct. It essentially scales 255 by alpha. This is just pre multiplying alpha into this color immediately. And then what we do is that we say that the pixel Is it grayscale or grayscale? What is the word? And then we do format equals uncom or or hg8 uncompressed like that. And then we say image dot data equals alloc well okay, we can do this later we can do this down here and here we will just type image pixels equals make we can just use rl color actually color and then it will just do this because this one is a ua this one is the same it's the index pixel format the rl color it's eight eight bits per channel so it's this format uh, r equals c so wait Oh, you don't even need this K thing here that I stole from Rayleigh because we just need to do this. So this pixel has these colors, and then wait. Dot R G B A, and the A is just A here. Then we can delete all this. Then you have your grayscale, yeah, then you have your pixels for your image, and then down here we can say that data is just raw data of image pixels, and the format that is we can remove. And then up here, of course, we write image grayscale, image grayscale, image grayscale, image grayscale, image grayscale. Compile, everything is wrong. Oh yeah, there's a, this is C code. <laughs> I pasted it from the, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is all wrong. <laughs> uh, I in zero to dot dot less than this stuff. So funny when you, you paste it in C code and just, everything is just wrong and suddenly, oh, look at that. The end. And we can close this one, reopen it. Tada! And I think this is even pre-multiplied alpha, so the font rendering is stable when I move around. <laughs> the cat, has, the neighbor's cat, is meowing a lot now. Meow. <laughs> uh, so we got, we got it in there. We've pre-multiplied alpha and everything. So it just looks nice. So if we now go back to Mr. Render Doctor, launch. Wait, I just, why does it sometimes not do anything? I'm like, load settings, launch. And then it's just like, no, it's nopes. Unclear. Capture one frame. Look at this. Here we have one. Here we have all this. This is the input texture you see here, and you have this drawn in one one draw call with fifty four indices. 
so that's pretty cool. I, I'm gonna clean this up at some point. Remove, try to remove all these glyphs that didn't resolve to anything nice. That's because this font doesn't contain them. Uh, but I'm sure that's doable. It's not so important right now. So that looks nice. Uh, so finally, then let's look at uh, getting the last row call out of here. This one, which is the square here. Hello, Kuro one half. What do you mean by one draw call? Are you rendering to a render texture and showing that? No, I'm the whole game renders with. So usually, if if your game would use, you know, if you use for, if we if we start my game, but this is a good summary of what we're done here now. If we start my game, you know, this is a tree here, and there's a bird here, and a player, and you have different animation frames, and you have some text here. Usually, if you made it so that the tree was one texture and the animation was one texture and the bird was one texture and you had all those separate textures and then you tell Raylib, hey, can you draw at this position with this texture? Then all those will become separate draw calls because it will need to tell the GPU to like uh, bind this texture. This is the texture you're going to use and then draw uh, this rectangle with uh, this texture on it. So essentially, you know, this is a rectangle here that uses a specific texture. So if you use separate textures, then you get separate draw calls. But if you make an atlas, which is something like this, here's, here's the two cat for animation frames, the tree, then you can just draw with one single texture and just, if you just know, like, where is the tree in here? Where is the, this animation frame? Where is this bird? Then you, can, then you can just say that draw with this texture and take it from this rectangle. And then it can just, do it in a single draw call, which is much more efficient because what costs a lot for GPUs is to, well, it costs a lot of uh, computing time to to submit a new draw call to the GPU. But you can, what this does instead does is that it says that here use this texture and then draw all these, like this will be a rectangle on the screen and this will be a rectangle. It's essentially. Um, you know, it, in 3D, you have like this it, this thing here. It consists of uh, two triangles. There's one triangle here and one triangle here. So that makes a quad. And then it says where in the texture to take those things from. Um, and yeah. So what, and the, regarding the Atlas, how it's generated, just to recap that is, I, <laughs> I, I, I made a bit of a pipeline today and yesterday. Today and yesterday. Today and yesterday. <laughs> I think I, my brain just broke. To yesterday and today. Uh, so the the atlas is. Uh, what Atlas does, is I have a program that makes the Atlas and it goes through a folder here I have. Here's some A-Sprite files, like this tree looks like this. Here's an A-Sprite file with tree. So it goes through these and extracts the data from these. And then it generates an image and put like the Atlas image and put those into there. And then it uses STB rect pack, which is a tiny library for packing rects efficiently. So it does that. That's why it looks uh, like this rect pack has gone in here and packed in all these. And then it also saves some metadata into a atlas.odin file of where in the atlas are things like this. Yeah. And then I also today I've added so that the font gets added into the atlas like this. And then it saves where in the Atlas are the different font glyphs. So it has all this info. And then what happened, we, we looked at this before and we ha here is the render doc and this is the draw calls. I have one draw call here for the red cube and I, ha and I have one draw call now for all the trees plus the text. Before I put the text into the Atlas, before I put the font into the Atlas, there was a separate draw call here for the text. Because, so John Doe is asking, doesn't Raylib do internal batching already? 
it just makes one or two draw calls when you run and drawing. Now the the batching is just that it if you use the same texture multiple times in a row but draw at different places, then it can like if you draw the same tree a thousand times, with like if if you just use tree.png which only contains a tree, and you draw that a thousand times on the screen, then it will generate a fine like a thousand rectangles on the screen and they will all use the same texture and that will be one draw call because it didn't have to switch texture right uh, and all it, and that's only also true if they happen one after another if there's like if there's draws one tree with one texture and then draws one bird with one texture and they're interleaved one after another then it must switch texture back and forth then you will have an enormous amount of draw calls right um the so the ba automatic batching in Raylib only it, it it sort of simplified it sort of looks at is this are you are you using the same texture as the previous thing you drew if yes then we can just take and draw both at the same time by just having two rectangles on the screen like okay we're gonna draw this here and this here and we take from the same texture but if you <clears throat> but if you have them in different textures then they must split them into separate draw calls which is what we saw here uh, when we ch changed to the atlas font here we got rid of the, at the, the font the text draw call it just became the same draw call as the game as the, as the other things in the atlas before that, the text did its own thing. So. Well, that's good that <laughs> what I say I agree with Raisin because, I mean, I this is my in, intuitive understanding of it. Uh, I haven't looked deep into the Raylib code. I just know that the code that draws text in Raylib essentially just uses an atlas for the text and then draws rectangles using that so it, it just takes it just draws on the screen and takes different things from the text atlas so what i've done now essentially is just combine the atlas for the font with the atlas of my textures for the game into one thing and then i manually assembled i manually assembled a font here i just say like okay uh so this is the font i use in the game use the atlas the main atlas that's this one and then here are the rectangles and here are all the info about the, which glyphs are inside it. And this is the stuff that comes from my generated code. It just uses this stuff here to, 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 to assemble this font thingy. Um, so I think it but I think I think it's quite a common mis misconception that there is some magical batching that because it several people have said it in the chat that there's a magical batching that just makes it efficient. Uh, it the only the only magical thing about it is that it will batch given that you have using the same texture anyways let's get rid of the last draw call shall we well not the la let's get rid of this one the separate one here and that's might be quite easy because in Raylib in Raylib you have set shape set shapes textures and this one says set texture and rectangle to be used on shapes drawing and this one even says it can be useful when using basic shapes and one single font. Defining a font char white a font char white rectangle would allow drawing everything in a single draw call. This one just says that well, maybe you can put your a rectangle a, a white rectangle into a texture and then you can use that to draw shapes. Right. Uh, so we can probably just generate a rectangle in our atlas. Maybe we'd put like a, I don't know how big it needs to be. Let's just put a few pixels by a few pixels white there. And then we can put that as some separate metadata in the atlas.odin and then we can use that in the game later. So we go to ace to atlas which is very badly named now because it's ace means ace bright but it does font now and soon also shapes texture but uh, you know that's fine 
Um, let's just here are the pack rects. So we just need a single rect that's like 10 by 10 pixels, I say. I don't know how big or small it should be. If there's any <coughs> benefit. So we do pack rect. We need to add one. This one is a bit short now. We need to add plus one. Pack rect font num chars plus, I plus len of textures. So this is the last element here. <laughs> I'm just hacking it in here. And the ID, we just put something bizarre like um, max i32. The biggest number. That that will be the uh, shapes tex texture ID is max32. Max i32. That's the biggest number an i42 can hold. Just put that there. That's just, we just need this because the pack, rect packer needs an ID for your. Uh, the thing you put in, and then we just say with fist eleven height is eleven. I I always put in one extra so I can I always put in one extra so I get a one pixel padding at the bottom. Right. And now we can do like this. If rp.id equals the shapes texture ID, we do this. Else if we do this. And then we have this one down here. Okay. So we know now, now that we're on this one. What we do then is that we... We will just draw a white thing into this here and image draw well wait image image draw a rectangle so we say we want to draw into the atlas image and we want to draw or want to make a rectangle like this Y, and it should be 10 by 10, that's what we said. We said 11 here, but there's one pixel padding. We draw that there and we draw it white. Now somewhere in our thing here, there will be that. That's all we need to do. And what we need to do now is just save somewhere. Where is the shapes texture rect is a rectangle. I can just do this. I can just do that. Good, good. And then at the bottom here, the bottom here, we will just do this. FMT.f print f. We say shapes texture rect is a rect. Uh, we steal this stuff here. Then we steal this stuff here. Maybe. Atlas. I put out the rectangle there. See, do we get a white rectangle in our. No, not the tree. The atlas. There you go. Look at that. There's a white. How big is it? Oh, it's 10 by 10 pixels. Excellentus. Uh, now we go to game and we say. 
rl.setshapes texture mm.atlas and we say that it's the shapes text what is it called even shapes texture rect this one dum dum restart this see if everything still works okay well it has drawn the, the rect the question is this is drawn using raylib draw rectangle rec something 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 let's Go into launch application, re reload the settings, save this capture, no. Go back here, capture a frame, go in here, look. Look. This one only one draw call. Tada. First first we clear the screen green. Screen screen green screen and then we draw. So there you have it. Uh, text text textures and shapes now an interesting question here is i don't know what raylib does i know I, I was thinking maybe this only works when it draws rectangles but maybe the circles it doesn't do that i don't know how it if it like has some smart way to draw circles uh, draw so let's maybe Let's just, just just enable the debug. Actually, what you can do is you can go to draw a circle v in Raylib, and then look at draw circle sector. Okay, what does that do? Um, well, it seems to use the shapes texture, but it ah uh, okay, it it just do it just does a bunch of segments and sort of goes around in a circle. So we. <clears throat> this is probably gonna work. It's gonna be amazing. Let's open render doc. Launch the game again, but enable the debug. So now the game is actually drawing a little circle per entity to show where where their where is their actual position, and then it draws a collider. Let's capture a frame. Go in here. It's still only one draw call, even though the debug stuff. Is. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, the atlas currently looks like this. I, I will, I will look a bit into cleaning this up so it doesn't put in the the bad. Like maybe all of them that use. This kind of bad rectangle. Maybe I can just say one of them and then push all of them to the same rect or something. Or maybe I will just manually key in my font, like key in the code points or something. Uh, so I, I choose which one because also f one problem here is of course localization. Like you can put in a few languages into your font, but you might like maybe if you want Chinese, then you have like maybe you want two and a half thousand characters. Then you might be in a bit of trouble here. Uh, so localization might, depending on how big texture you have and stuff, might give you trouble. But we'll see. But that's pretty cool. I mean, I think this font size is also pretty big but I like having quite readable text but let's see if we can bring it down a bit uh, game what's it called ace to atlas Where's the font size here? We we'll bring this to 10 and then we go down here and we say uh, Atlas font size 
V and then we say font size maybe with a little line break at the end and now this is very small why did it why did it shrink in the game though that didn't make any sense oh maybe no I don't know let's see so now these are very tiny that's a bit too small <laughs> but draw text ex this one Wait, how? Uh, well, this is a bit tricky with fonts because you want, if you're not doing everything pixel perfect, you can sort of use slightly higher res font. So this is eight pixels, but I think it's eight pixels on the screen and then it's zoomed up a few times. Mm. Why did that? But why did it get smaller though? Oh, maybe it's because font equals base. Maybe this this just so we put here Gmail. No, we put Atlas font size, whatever I call it. I can type. What did I call it then? Oh yeah, it was a constant. Maybe that's just why. Yeah, there you go. But no, see, that's no good. That's too. Uh, that's too rough. Uh, so it's eight. Yeah, it, it is a bit tricky with the scaling. Like you, eight times four. That's six forty-two. I mean, that's the same as we had before, essentially. So it is a bit tricky. Here's a nice chunky font. Anyways, that all worked out nicely. I wonder how quick, how fast this program runs now. Let's do the old. Uh, I don't think VSync is enabled, so I think if I just remove the target FPS. Well, I don't know actually because I don't, I don't printing it anywhere. You can run it via render doc. I think render doc might give us a performa performance penalty, but okay, this is running at 2000 FPS roughly. That's quite good. I mean, I almost expected more, but maybe it's because of render doc. I don't know. Anyways, that all works nicely. Uh, like I said, I have to see if this, like maybe I have to split the font back out to a separate texture if I need, if it takes, if I have localization and it takes too much space and you know, all that stuff. But uh, just having the shapes plus all the shapes and uh, textures in one atlas is quite cool. But if you're doing a, like a minimalistic game, maybe not so much text, or maybe you only support a few languages, then you can absolutely have your whole game in in one texture like this. And it's going to be, you can probably draw your whole game in one single draw call. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, I've done what I set out to do today, so I'm done. Any, unless there are any questions, I'm gonna end it for today. So, yeah, and I can also say regarding this game, I haven't gotten very far on it because I've just you can go up and say hello to this thing, and you. I mainly focus on technical things because I, when I made my previous game, there was lots of technical things I wanted to solve in this one to make my workflows nicer. 
So I've been focusing on that. So I have, for example, this whole ACE to Atlas thing that takes ACE sprite files, put them into an Atlas. Just having that, not being having to export to PNG in between is great. Um, yeah. hiding anyways that's it for today thanks everyone for watching and i hope you have a nice day evening morning or something else good night <laughs>